So the first is the multiple choice section. Multiple choice, right? Uh, one point one. When a ball at rest hang by a single vertical spring, the tension in the string is mg. So at rest vertical, right? And then um, gravity is mg, and the tension in the string is going to be also mg. So it's at rest, obviously. If the ball is made to move in a horizontal circle, that the string is as uh, the cone, then the string tension. So that case is going to be something like this, where you have a string, and then you have the bar down here, and it's moving. It's a cone shape, right? And so in that case, it asks for the string tension. So if you draw the free body diagram for this. You're gonna have mg dao. Your tension is gonna be this way, and so the because the remember the ball is moving horizontally only, so it's only moving in the x y plane kind of. So this has no um, acceleration and no movement in the z axis and the vertical axis here, right? And so it's not gonna move up or down. And so the tension here, the tension, if you break it into two components, so this tension and this tension, the tension in the y-axis has to be equal to mg, right? And so the tension itself, including both y and x component, and for that reason, this length of the tension has to be greater than uh, ty, right? So t is greater than ty, equal to mg. And so you know the tension has to be greater than mg, and that's why uh, you get as b here. It's all the way greater than mg. The tension has to be greater. One point two. The figure below shows a person swinging on a rope, starting at a point higher than a. Consider the following. The downward force, one downward force of gravity, that's a downward force of gravity, to the force exerted by the rope from A to O, that's the tension force, right? And three, the force in the direction of the body motion, so the body motion is like this, there's a force here, I don't think so, but a four, a centripetal force in the horizontal direction, so like horizontal here, right? Um, which of the above forces are acting on the body when it's in position A? So obviously, there's only gravitational force and the tension force. Um, this uh, three, uh, four, centripetal force is a net force, right? So that doesn't count. And the force in the direction of the body motion, I don't know what that is. Um, maybe with accelerating, the net force has some component in that direction, the tendential acceleration. That's the net force. It's not the fundamental force that's acting on the body. So that's why B is only one or two. So it's only the, you have the um, gravitational force, right? And so we have the, uh, the tension force. 1.3, you have um, 100 kilogram mass connecting to a light string and suspended vertically. It is displayed to an angle. So this is the, the first is an angle. Uh, released with some initial velocity. So there's an initial velocity. Okay. Diagram below indicate the position of the mass at different time. Why does a question mark here? <laughs> okay, so this is the first um, instance, second instance, and then the third instance. And then you notice there's some velocity here, initial velocity. That's why it can end up at a higher position compared to the initial position. Um, so the question, no question mark, which 
in which position is the tension in the string uh, greatest? And the answer is position B. One way to look at this problem is using um, a polar coordinate, kind of. So here you have mg down, right? And then you also have tension into this way. That's the two force acting on it. And then if you look at the radial direction, drop this down, this not very perpendicular. This, and this is perpendicular. You're going to break the uh, mg, the gravity force, into two components in the radial direction and in the tangential direction. This uh, angles on to be theta, right? You have two. Uh, parallel line, then you have this line cut through them, so the angle is to be the same, that's geometry back in high school. Then we have the angle setup, we know this component of gravity is simply mg cosine theta, you have a right triangle, and the size is that cosine theta. And so if you construct the, you look along this radial direction, you're going to have t minus mg cosine theta is going to be equal to ma, and this a is going to be in the centripetal acceleration, right? So it's going to be into the, into the center, and this is going to be v squared over r. Uh, this is the formula for centripetal force. And so this is going to be square over r is going to give you the, um, the centripetal acceleration. So with this one, so you can calculate t from this. So t is going to be mv square over r plus mg cosine theta, right? And here if you analyze, if you analyze this point, you're going to see cosine theta, m didn't change, and g didn't change, and then look at cosine theta, cosine theta is between um, 0 and 1, right, uh, cosine function is bounded by uh, actually negative 1 and 1, okay. and then like from, right, and so if you want to maximize the tension, then this Cosine has to be equal to maximize you want it to be about one. Right? So that's gonna be when cosine equals zero, so in this case B, right? When cosine equals zero, it's gonna be at one of the limit, which is one. That's gonna maximum that. And also if you look at this term over here, that's important. You have R, which is fixed, we don't care. M is also fixed, we don't care. If you look at velocity, uh this point B right here is the point where you have the highest velocity, right? You convert all the potential energy into kinetic energy. B has the lowest potential energy, so it's going to have the uh, highest kinetic energy. That's the highest V, right? The point with the highest V. And so this component of T also highest. From that, you can know the position B is where the Spring has the greater tension. 1 by 4, you have a 4 wheel drive vehicle moving up a hill. It has an angle theta. You have this angle theta. You have a cord, something like that. You have 4 wheel. Two, let's draw 2 more. 4 wheels. Um, the driver wants to accelerate the car as much as possible. We want to maximize acceleration. All the wheels have the same mu at the row. So we know the coefficient of friction is mu. Take the two correct answer, the maximum friction that can be generated for acceleration. So here you draw the first diagram. You have mg, right? And then let's see, it's just going uphill, right? So the um, friction force is going down here. That's going to be 
ff equal mu fn right? and what's the normal force normal force is like this the normal force is going to be equal to the uh, this angle is theta by the way and the normal force this is normal force normal force is going to have the same component with the F equal to the one of the component of the gravitational force because the cart doesn't fly away or destroy the earth, right? So it stay in this line. And so the, the component force in that direction has to be balance each other to make sure the cart doesn't fly away. And so this component is going to be mg, um, mg cosine theta. Right? So, and it has to be equal to mg cosine theta. And here you're going to have mu fn the normal force is going to be mg cosine theta right and also um, it's a maximum acceleration right so that's why i have this equation right here okay uh, and then now i guess we do the what is asked for the maximum friction that can be generated for the acceleration okay so we have the formula for ff now, so let's see it as um, we have less than the weight of the car times the gravitational force related friction, more than the weight of the car times the rate of mg. Then coefficient of kinetic friction is mu, right, or equal to the weight. So we have less than, more, equal to, and then the last one it depend on the angles of the hill. Now this problem asks for two correct answer. So we have. Uh, D is absolutely for sure is correct, right? Depends on the angle of the hill. That is uh, for sure. The friction does depend on the angle because in the equation itself, we say mu mg cosine theta. So theta is in the, in the equation, so it does depend. So D is absolutely correct. The only thing to debate left is if less than, more than, or equal to. And that's that's the problem, right? Um, we have cosine function is bounded between negative one and one. Now, in this case, the hill with maximum is like ninety degree, so that's pretty much um, be zero and one, right? And because it's less than one, then the maximum this can get is mu mg. And so more than this doesn't work. Right? Can be more than. And then the next one is between equal to or less than this one is the tricky part so let's say c is correct so it is equal to the weight so you have cosine is theta is going to be sort of one right it's equal to so if you want to cross this out the cosine has to be equal to one you know you to cross the cosine theta out then that's k you're going to have theta equal to zero right cosine zero is one if cosine this theta is zero then it's not a hill anymore it's going to be a flat surface and in that case it's going to defeat the the purpose of the problem which is going to be up a hill and so for that reason we choose a so not c and we choose a and also if you we look at the and uh, reverse the option of uh, a and c so c is only true if theta equals zero right? it's the only case that c is going to be true but for a um, less than the weight so cosine the probability that cosine theta is less than one is a lot higher so this one is true as long as theta is greater than zero and less than 90 degree, right? So the, you can see the range of A is a lot more applicable compared to the range of answer C. So that's another reason why choose A instead of B or C, right? So A and D are the correct answer. We have another problem. 
we have three blocks A, B, and C. We have mass A, B, C. Block B slides on the table. We have this here. We have a mu. By the bullets are gonna get usually frictionless and massless, so that's good. You don't have to do a uh, high omega, right? Let's see you learn it later. The system is released from rest with flock A and C. Starting at distant H from the floor, that's potential energy. So it's H down here. Uh, release from rest, that's important. The initial kinetic energy is, is uh, zero. Assuming block A is heavy enough to fall, so MA is greater than MC. Obviously, that's the only way for this to fall down. What is the velocity of block A? Just go to the graph. So at another instant, block A is down here. What's the velocity of it? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So what does this ask for? Right. There's uh, a few ways to do it. Uh, my way to do this kind of problem is I redraw diagram with A, then this B, then this is C. Right. That's how I redraw it. I just redraw the system into a nice small little system. And here you have like M a G Dow, right? So over here I'm gonna have my M A G. Then over here you have M C G. Over here I also have my M C G. And because it's we moving this way to the left, so we're gonna have friction here to the right, right? And that friction is gonna be mu n. And what is a normal force here? You have you have M B G down here. And therefore, you have the normal force upward, right? And the normal force is going to be equal to mbg. And you balance that. B is not like flying away or across the table. So I to go mbg. So from that, friction is going to be mu mbg, right? So we do have friction here. Friction is mu mbg. Now we have other data. Um, we can go ahead and construct the, the equation we need. So the first thing it asks for the velocity. When it asks directly for velocity, um, one trick to notice is you use energy. If it asks for acceleration, you know you have to do the free body diagram. It asks for velocity. It's easier, an easier approach is to use uh, energy. That's a better approach. We have T1 plus U equal to 2. Initial kinetic energy is 0. Start from rest, that's the important information. U, uh, for U, U is a little more complicated here. We have MAO dev, right? So that's a positive. MAGH, that's positive potential energy. So minus here, I look at MC. MC is going to go up, right? If, if MAO dev, MC has to go up. That's negative MBGH. And another one is you have friction. Let's do negative work and slow down the motion. That's going to be FF times H. Right? And FF is going to be mu MBG H equal to T2. T2 is one half. And then all the mass, right? And we square and read the same anyways because they are connected through a, a string. And so with that you can have V is V squared is two times uh, you group G and H together. Right? So if you group G H together, you can have N A minus N B Wait, that's this MC, not M. Minus MC, minus mu MB, divided by MA plus MB plus MC. Then for V, just take the square root, right? 
and that's going to give you this answer right here that's exactly the same right you have square root square root you have two you have denominator is the mass total mass um the h and then the inside is going to be ma positive ma minus mc and minus nd mu then the next question it asks for the acceleration acceleration is where you do the free body diagram and that's where this one come in right you have uh, if let's say I assume this is going to be positive right we have mag minus mu mbg minus mcg so this whole thing is going to be equal to m a if we want r to m and a plus mb plus mc so an acceleration and so acceleration is going to be um, pull the g out we have M A minus mu M B minus M C divided by the total mass. And that's gonna give you this version right here. Total mass again G out. We have M A positive minus M C minus mu and B. That is correct, right? Here is the 1.7 some work here already but I can always redo it for you so yeah. in this problem we have a system below consists of a convey belt so this is like a belt you're moving it to this right you have four box on it uh, ABCD initially addressed uh, okay, and then the belt is given a constant acceleration. The belt is accelerated to the right. And we also have the uh, coefficient of friction of each of the box and the belt. And the going to be the surface down here. And we also know the, uh, the acceleration of the belt, how fast is this belt moving. So now it asks for how many and which box will start sliding what do you mean by sliding right so if you let's make this a very simple case you have a belt right here then you have a box right and then if this belt start moving to the right this box is going to move to the right with the belt and the reason for that is because there's a friction moving the box with the belt right and so if you analyze that, you look at the box, it's going to have mg downward. And there's normal force upward is equal to mg because the box is not going to fly or crest the belt. And so you're going to have friction. At max is going to be mu m, right? Is mu mg. And the uh, um, the bell let's say move with a then the box is fixed with the belt so it's also move with ma right so you have f net equal ma f equal ma that's the famous newton second equation second law so we're going to have f is mu mg equal to ma you cross the m out so you have mu g equal a right so this is the maximum acceleration the box can achieve above this it, it can't they're gonna slip they're gonna move backward kind of they're not gonna stick with the bell anymore so that's it can't catch up with the bell right? so that's, uh, that's what's happening so here it asks for uh, how many which the block is start sliding so you see uh, the bell is moving at 0 0.5 g right? so if you look at this if mu g equals to 0 0.5 g then mu has to be 0 0.5 in order to catch up with the uh, with the belt in this case we only have mu d is 0 0.6 which is enough high enough to make sure that the friction can be high enough that it catch up d and can catch up with the belt but for the rest of it from a b c the mu is too small, 
so the friction is not as high and so the friction is not high enough to catch up with the bell and so that's going to slip so they're either going to slide the sliding that's going to be c a b and c that's the main reason and 1.8 from the previous question which any of the blocks stay together yes which one okay so um if we analyze the uh, specific value of the meal, let's see, is this right in red? It's 0 0.2, B is 0 0.3, C is 0 0.4, right? So if it's if the meal is 0 0.2, which means that it's gonna fly a lot, and then 0 0.3 is gonna so slide but not as much as 0 0.2 0 0.4 means that it, it, it does slide but it's not a lot so with that in mind if you only analyze a and c right so a is going to slide a lot but b is not going to slide that much and that that's, they're going to separate easily right? because the the one on the left is going to move to the left a lot and the one on the right doesn't move to the left that much right but if you analyze A and B, you're going to see a problem here because A can move to the left a lot, but B doesn't want to move that much. And so what happened is A is going to move to the left and it's going to hit B and then it's going to pull B to the left. So they're going to be together. They're going to be attached together. They're not going to separate because A want to separate, A want to move to the left a lot, but B doesn't want to move that much. And so they have to be in contact for that reason. And so um, it asks for any blocks stay together, right? So let's just say that yes, A and B. So A and B is going to move, going to be together. One point nine in the figure below. What is the relationship between velocity of A and B? So this is a simple problem. You just have distance from here to here is going to be xa. You're going to have 1xa, 2xa, 3xa. Then distance from here to here is going to be xb plus xb. And that's going to be equal to the length of the wire. So you take the derivative of it, you're going to have the derivative of the this L is constant, right? The length of the Y is constant, that's zero. And that's going to be uh, exactly this equation, right? VB plus 3VA plus zero. 1.10, in the same system as problem 1.9, so the same system as it's analyzed, this system, assuming there's motion, okay? What is the direction of friction force on plot A and B, assuming B and B is greater than MA. So if you stare at this problem, if and B is greater than MA, the motion of B is going to go this way. And if motion of B is going downhill, then A has to go uphill, right? Just because if the string, there's more string to this way, then somewhere here has to be shorter, right? There's less string. In the conservation of mass kind of and so this a has to move upward to the into a cow of that lost in a string right and so with that you can easily know friction of b is going to be upward right but the friction of a is going to be downward because a is moving up so friction is downward and his d is going to be the correct one right Friction of B going upward because B going downward, and then B is downward because uh, an A is downward because A is moving upward. Okay, we finished the uh, multiple um, choice. Here we have the free response. <laughs> and this is the problem. Feel free to pause the video and do it on your own. But, um, here we have uh, A and B, uh, uh, block A and B, A is on top of B, and you have 
uh, force apply on them. We also have a coefficient of friction mu. So for A, self acceleration, for A and B, if you observe a sliding on one surface only, let's return for that. Okay. So if there's one, if I'm the right setup, by the way, the right setup, right? On one surface only, so which one is going to slide? And the answer is that it's going to slide. If there must be sliding, the surface of two of them, right? Top here and bottom here. Two of them, one surface is going to slide. And if you apply force on B, the surface that's going to slide is going to be down here, which is B in the graph. Um, I think there's some theoretical analyze for that. But you can also solve it experimentally. You put something uh, on your phone and then, well, I can show it to you here. Here, right? Um, let's say my phone is um, object A, and then my calculator is going to be B, right? So B is in the bottom. So it's going to be on A. And let's say I apply a force this and then I apply a force F on B so in the bottom object right slide it see the only the only surface that is sliding is the between the graph and the object B between the calculator right and even when I switch it doesn't really matter for my phone the surface gonna slide is gonna be the between my phone the, the bottom object the table and not anything in the top object. Now that you know that, you can go ahead and um, solve for that problem. Right? If A here, uh, let's say for A, and you have B down here, right? and then you have F. So uh, you also saw in my experiment that they're going to stick together. Because there's no sliding between A and B. So you can imagine them like one object, kind of. You can have something like this, kind of. Because they're going to be one object. But this is friction at the bottom. Right? There's friction. And let's see, you're going to have gravitational force, so MA plus NBG. And then that you also have the normal force, which is also equal to the gravitational force, right? The force in the y direction has to be um, canceled out because it's not going to fly away. My phone doesn't fly away with my calculator. That's going to be hilarious. Anyways, so that, so you can also write in this case, FF is going to be mu FN, right? Because it moves, no more slippage anymore. Well, that's the, the A slippage, so friction is maximum. And you have F N, which is going to be M A plus M B, times the gravitational force. Okay. And so, in this case, we're going to solve for the acceleration. We have the uh, free body diagram, construct the F1 as F, we're going to be equal to and A plus and B time acceleration. Right. And then you have F F, which is this thing over here. Up here, you have mu M A plus and B times G. So the solve for A is simply F minus mu M A plus and B times G divided by M A plus and B. And that's a quick and easy. One, the, the main part is the analysis on like one surface only. For part B, still the right setup, but it has the February diagram and self acceleration. It's just sliding on both surfaces, right? So now that's a both surface. Uh, in that case, you might have to do um, separately. It's not one anymore because the slippage on both surface on both here and the surface over here. So on A only, 
you analyze A, downward you have MAG, that's normal force upward, that's also MAG, right? A is not going to fly away. Um, and then you have the friction force, which bring it to the right. And well, that's that's the only force that make A accelerate to the right. Right? And a is it did accelerate to the right, so definitely friction has to be to the right. So with friction to the right, this friction is slipping, so this friction is going to be mu of n, right? And in this case, it's going to be mag. Okay. And here on B, again, you have gravitational force, mag, bg, actually. Right? And then, actually, you also have another force from down here for ma, right? Because ma is on top of B. So that's also another force of work is uh, applied on B from A. And for the normal force, therefore, you can buy them both to make sure B doesn't fly away or destroy the Earth. You're going to have, this is MA plus MB. It's MG. And here, look, you have the uh, friction force of A to the right. And so due to Newton's third law, you're going to have same force, but same magnitude mu mag is in the opposite direction to the left on b right because b on a is to the right so a and b has to be to the left that's one you also have another friction force uh, from b on the graph right? so that is mu n and n in this case is ma plus mb g and then you have the uh, force apply force to the right at usual. So here in this case, you can have equation to both. Now here you're gonna have F minus mu m a g minus mu m a plus m b g. Yes, you distribute that. It's gonna be g here. And mu m b g like this, right? and then this will be minus. And you have this. Cancel out, okay, so not cancel out. There's going to be two of them, and all of this net force is going to equal to MA. So AA, now that here is going to be AB, right? So AB is going to be F minus 2 mu MAG minus we group mu and G together. Will be two M A plus M B divided by or not? Oh, yeah, it is M B. Okay, so that's going to be B down here. And so that's for the uh, uh, A B for A A. So up here you draw the net force everywhere M A. You're gonna get mu M A G equal to M A. A A, then A cancel out, A cancel out. So you're gonna have A A equal to mu M G. And this is still gonna be the solution for this part of the problem. The next part, uh, C, to the right setup, so to the same setup. Where is the value of F? So separate the two k's in part A. Uh, okay. So the largest force that's slipping gonna occur. So for that case, uh, one way to do it is to set this two acceleration equal. So you solve for f. So right, you use if this in this case two of them slip, uh, they're slippish between a and b. So if you set them equal, right, the acceleration between them are equal, then a and b are connected, and there's no slippage anymore. So that's way to do it. So you have a A equal to A B, right? And A A is gonna be mu G equal to A B is F minus mu G two M A plus M B. Everything divided by M B. 
we bring in beta this way, and then be over here. And then you have F, so it's going to be MB mu G plus mu G 2MA plus MB. If you group mu G, that's going to be 2MA plus 2MB. In that case, you bring two out. So this is going to be the force that that divides the two cases right, between either slippage between A and B. So at this value, it's going to be the value that decides um, which case will happen. Finally, D for the left setup. So yeah, so we we move to the left setup. And you have both blocks move together. Let's explain briefly. So for this one, um, so you have A, B, yeah. you have A on top, B on bottom, the force is on A. Yeah. In this case, if you analyze A only, and then have downward, normal force, upward. And uh, let's say you're going to have a, you're going to have a friction force to the left, right? And then with that friction force to the left, there's a Newton third law, and B is going to left friction to the right, and then if B is pulling to the right, then between surface and B, there's going to be another friction to the left. And so the thing is, you want to see, you're going to compare this to friction, like between the, this force to the right and this force to the left, to see if it's strong enough to move B. And the, the arrow to the right here is going to be the the same entity with the arrow to the left here, that's the Newton third law I analyzed before. And this arrow to the left here is going to be the friction. Right? The friction depends on the normal force here. And this normal force depends on the gravitational force here. So it's only depend on the mass of A. Right? But if you look at this um, friction force, the friction force is going to depend on the normal force from here to here. right? But this normal force is going to depend on the mass of both A and B. And so for sure, this normal force is going to be bigger than this small normal force. And so you say for sure, this friction force here is going to be greater than this uh, arrow, blue arrow to the right here. And that's, that's the reason why it's a no, you can't. Uh, next problem. This problem is uh, a lot easier. Again, feel free to um, freeze the video, pause the video, and try the problem itself. Now, um, to solve this problem, we just we're gonna have two stage. The first stage is on need to here right before the impact. Right, that's the use energy conservation. The second stage is the collision, right? And so for that, so first stage, T2, right? and then this is release from rest, right? Release from rest, yes. Zero. And the mu uh, U is going to be MAG times R, right? that's the difference between here to here, right before that. Collision T2 is one half MAV square. There's VA initial, right? the uh, initial velocity of A before the collision. We can show MA out, so you can easily calculate VAI as 2GR. You can say square root of that. So that's the important information. We're going to use it later. So that's the first stage. The second stage is the uh, impact, right? Now the impact, 
you're going to have conservation of leaving the momentum in the x direction. In that case, you're going to have MABAI plus MBVPI equal to MAVAF plus MBVPF. In this case, notice I'm doing it um, implicitly, so I'm going to solve a direction and magnitude at the same time. But anyways, so we, we do know VAI already. Um, we need to know so VBI is certainly, oh, well, yeah, actually zero, right? It's at rest. B is at rest initially. So that's helpful. You get rid of this term. Uh, we need to know VAF and VBF. And so this is going to be the two variables, right? Because we know this already. Yeah, so. That's one equation, two unknowns, and that's the problem. So we do another equation of E. So E is going to be um, B, let's say VBF minus VAF divided by VAI minus VBI. And VB initial is zero. Right? Uh, cancel the term out. Okay, so now here we have. Two equations, two unknowns, right? And just go ahead and solve them. And you're going to get the solution for part A. Because you, you want to solve them, which I don't think you need to in the exam. You just go ahead and say two equations, two unknowns. But if you really want to solve them, and we're solving for um, velocity of the back and the box. Okay, so we're following both of them. So you're going to have V, 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 A, I equal to V, P, F minus V, A, F. So you're going to have VPF equal to EVAI plus VAF. You plug them back in, you have VA, MAVAI equal to MAVAF plus MB times EVAI plus VAF. I replace VBF with VBF over here. And let's go ahead and solve for VAF. Plus M P E V A I. Okay, actually, let's repeat M B V A F. You can isolate it V A F. Of M A plus M B. Okay, over here you have M A V A I minus M P V A I. Then you can solve for V A F, which is uh, M A minus M P E times V A I divided by M A plus M B and then V A I to solve a bow is just two Z R right that's V A F and then V P F is simply E VAI, VAI is square root 2ZR plus VAF, so plus this whole thing. Right, and we get VBF. Positive side, by the way. And that's going to be the solution for this part of the problem. Uh, part B asks for the loss of energy. So that's um, also, let's try to assume M is the same. Okay. Well, and it's not, so not too bad, right? The chain of energy is just the initial energy minus the final energy. The initial energy is one half. M A V A initial square plus one half M B V B initial square, right? V B initial is zero because uh, B is at rest usually. The 
the gravitational force also zero is all on the horizontal line, right? Then you take this, you take the initial energy minus the final energy is one half m a v a f square plus one half m b v b f square. Right? Here we have one half m um, v a i square. V a i square is two g r. It's two g r. And then you have two to cancel out, right? So that's going to be mgr minus one half ma and vaf square is going to be this whole thing square. Right. This is vaf. Let's see if you have m is the same as m m m m. You're going to have uh, 1 minus E square root 2 GR over 2. This is VAF. And you square this, so you have square 4 and this is 2 GR. So here's going to be 1 minus E square 4 2 GR plus 1 half MB and then VB square. This is VP. Right. Uh, okay. This is going to stay the same. Uh, this again is going to be 1 minus that. And down here is going to be 2. And then I guess we can small this up. Squeeze it here, and that's going to be VB square. Right. And you break the pregnancy with here minus, and that's going to be the final answer. Right. Writing in editor, yeah, that's going to be the, the end of this practice midterm.